If you are someone who likes to use Python to run web scripting tasks, then you will find today's lesson useful. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use Request's HTML Python package to pass HTML from Amazon's website. So if you have never heard of Request's HTML Python package before, so basically the Request's HTML package is a Request's Python library on steroids. And some additional features on top of the uh, Request's library that we get, such as JavaScript support, expect query letters, mark user agent, and async support. All right, so let me go into my VS Code. Now for this lesson, I'm going to uh, run two different exercises. For the first exercise, we're going to run uh, several basic usage uh, tasks. And for the second exercise, I'm going to show you how we can use requests HTML Python package to run async requests. All right, so first we need to install the uh, library. All right, so to install the package, we'll run the command pip install requests dash html and enter, and that will install the uh, package. Now, from the import statement, I'll simply import the time module, and from requests underscore html, I'm going to import the html session class. All right, so when we are trying to uh, make a request call to a browser, we need to first of all make a session. So here I'm going to create a HTML session object, and I'll name the object session. And from the session object, we can attach different headers property, such as user agent, uh, the accept value, the accept language value, connection, and convalescence. Now here's the uh, default properties that I'm going to provide to make a request code to Amazon's website. Now here they have Amazon's website open. Now let's say I want to uh, scrape all the service port uh, listings on Amazon's website. So the first thing I need to do here is I need to create the URL variable. Now we need to make a request code. And to make a request code, we'll simply uh, use the session object dot get. It will pass the URL. And I'll name the output as response. All right, so if I go in the run this code block, and let's see what happens. And here, if I print response dot status code, and it's going to return 200, meaning that the request code is successful. Now, going back to Amazon's website, now let's say I want to scrape all the uh, posting, or oh, not posting, listing titles or product titles. So I'm going to select the uh, product title, right click, inspect. Now here we can see that this element is attached to the uh, product title. All right, so let me go back. And by looking at this uh, element HTML markup structure, I can simply use this attribute to locate all the uh, product titles. I'm going to copy this uh, class attribute value. And we know the uh, tag type is going to be span uh, tag tag. I want to use expect query to extract elements. So reference the response object dot HTML dot expect. Now to extract the element using expect query, so it's going to be two four slashes. And we know the tag is going to be span tag followed by the class attribute. Now here I want to insert the class attribute value and close bracket. And I'll name the output product title. Now if I print product title, and it's going to return a list of element objects. So here each element object represents the HTML container that tied to here, let me go back. That ties to uh, each product title element. Now if I want to grab all the uh, product listing titles, so we can say for product in string, let's make this pro product titles. So here I can say for product title in product titles. And from the element object, which is going to be product title, and I can print the uh, title by referencing the text attribute. 
Now, if I print this loop, oh, this should be text, not a title. And it's going to list out every single uh, product listing's title. Now, let's say I want to return just the HTML markup. So here we can reference the HTML attribute. And I'll simply return just the HTML source code that are tied to the element. And you can also use CSS selector to select an element. Right, so I'm not very experienced when it comes to CSS uh, selector. But if you prefer to use CSS letter to uh, do the HTML scraping, then reference the HTML attribute. Now let me go back to the uh, developer's tool. Now from the window on the right, so these are different CSS attributes that are tied to the element. All right, so let's say I want to use, uh, let's use this one, dot A dash size medium. Now let's say I want to use this uh, CSS attribute to do the scraping. Now from the HTML attribute, we need to use the find function. Then we can insert the CSS property. Now name this as product HTML. All right, so if I run line 28, if I print product HTML, and again, it's going to return this, and I can basically insert a loop, Let's call this a full product code in product HTML. And I can return each product's title using the text attribute. Now, let's say you just want to return the first item. So here we can set the first parameter to true. And I'll simply return just the first item. All right, so I already covered this one. Uh, which is going to be uh, line 28. Now, we know many times uh, when you are trying to do a web scraping uh, exercise, a web page is going to have uh, multiple pages. So if I scroll down, all right, so here we have uh, 20 pages of products. Now, to iterate each page, and it's really easy using a uh, request is HTML. All right, so here I can say for page HTML, in response, HTML, and that's how you uh, iterate each page. I can print each page's uh, URL using the URL attribute. And because I don't want my IP to get blocked, so I'm going to delay each execution by 0.5 second. Now, if I go ahead and run this loop, right, so it's going to basically uh, go to the pagination. And it's going to print uh, each page's URL. I'm going to kill uh, the operation because uh, it's going to take too long to iterate everything. Now, let's go to exercise number two, which is to uh, run the async uh, requests. So by using the async requests, we'll be able to uh, run multiple requests simultaneously. So here from requests HTML module, I'm going to import async HTML session class. Then I'm going to create my session. All right, so here I need my session, async session. And I'll provide my headers property. Now to make the async requests. So here I'm going to create three functions. The first function is going to make a request code to a Redis website. Second one is going to be to Craigslist and followed by uh, Python's uh, website. Now, when you are trying to make an async uh, request call, so here in each function, I need to insert this uh, async keyword to uh, specify that I want to make a, a synchronized request call. Inside the function, I need to add this uh, await statement before my session object. Now, to run these three functions simultaneously, so we'll call the async session object that run. And we'll simply pass the functions. And first one is going to be get rid of, followed by get Craigslist, followed by get Python org. And I'll name the outputs R1, R2, and R3 because we have three functions. 
Right, so let me terminate this session. And I'm going to run uh, this code block by itself. Now here if I print R1, the URL, R2 URL, R2 URL, the URLs returned in the correct order. And once we get the responses back, we can treat R1, R2, and R3 as their individual responses object. And we can script each website by referencing these three uh, response objects. So this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hope you guys find this video useful. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.